Hello, this is a quick look at how I did one of my dailies recently. Uh, first of all, I'm going to just delete the uh, default objects in the scene. And uh, I think that's how every good Blender scene starts. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to add a plane in the scene. Now, I want to make a ribbon. So I'm actually going to, um, before I do anything, I want to I want to texture map that. So I'm just going to uh, uh, unwrap it. I'm just going to hit reset, which will just map it completely to its extents. Uh, that's all I need to do for the texture mapping right now. So now I'm going to scale it in X uh, 20, because I would like kind of a ribbon. And I'm going to um, add some subdivisions. I'm actually going to add 20 subdivisions here uh, so that I get an uh, even number of squares uh, along here. And I'm just going to uh, uh, go ahead and subdivide that one more here uh, just to break that up a little bit. Now, I would like this vertical, so I'm going to rotate that uh, 90 degrees. And this is our ribbon that we're going to run a simulation on. Now, uh, right away, I can actually just go to the cloth sim, and I can run a cloth sim. But if I do that, uh, it just falls straight down, which is not what I want. Uh, I do want to have uh, it locked on the base, and then it kind of flies up with the with a, a wind force. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these bottom vertices and I'm going to go to my vertex selections and I'm going to add a new vertice group assign and I'm just going to call this lock um, and uh, assign those. So now when I go back to my class sim I can say pinning and I can pin the lock. And so what will happen now if I run this is it's still going to fall down but you can see that these points are actually now locked, uh, which is good. Now, uh, I'm going to get rid of my gravity force right now. So we're going to go to cloth field weights, and we're going to just pull our gravity all the way down. And at this point, if I run the sim, I see nothing happening. But if I do move this object, you can see that it is, uh, it is doing the cloth sim uh, right now. So we're all good right now. What I'm going to do is add a force field and we're going to add a uh, turbulence. And this force is going to uh, break this up into some noise, but I need to make this much stronger. And here we can start to see uh, this happen. I'm going to change the size until I get the turbulence that I like. And that's feeling pretty good. And now I still want to have these waving up. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to add another force. We're going to add a wind force. And we're going to increase the strength of that a little bit. And let's run this simulation. And I keep playing with these values until I get something that I like. And let's just say this is working for me now. The next thing I would do is I would just take this, duplicate it, uh, say on uh, oh, one Y direction here. And then I'm going to hit Shift R to just duplicate that a few more times. And so now I've got a whole row of these uh, being simulated. And I can see if I move my wind, I can have effects on that uh, and however I want to do this. So let's just say that's all good. Uh, I'm just going to grab these and we're going to duplicate them this way. And so now I've just created a grid. You could really do anything. And so now I've just got a bunch of these uh, waving ribbons in the air. Now, if I get what I like, uh, which let's just say this is uh, this is what I was looking for, uh, what I can just do is grab everything, and then I can hit Alt-C and just create a mesh from it. And what that's going to do is just blow out all the simulation. Now there's, there's no more simulation on it uh, because I just wanted a of way to deform these meshes and then I'm going to hit control J to link them all together again and so now what I have is just one object uh, that's just these random ribbons here uh, let's put a smoothing on there and then let's load up our node editor and we're going to say new and I'm just going to use an emission shader on here so we'll go um, to, to emission and then for color, uh, instead of actually using a texture map, I'm just going to um, use uh, 
say my geometry here and I'll use my, my normal and what that's going to give me is a result like this uh, which is based on the direction the faces uh, are facing uh, you could try different you could try different looks just trying some of these nodes generally they're used for UV maps uh, coordinates and whatnot but in this case I think the effect was kind of neat so uh, I'm going to click somewhere where I would like my focus to be and I'm going to say uh, add an empty and let's just add an empty there I'm going to rename that to focus and then I think I deleted my camera so I'm going to add a new camera and I'll control alt 0 to give me the camera from the view that I'm currently in and then with the camera selected I go to my focus and I say focus and I can really blow out the uh, depth of field here and so now oops, back to my camera uh, I can actually use my camera and I can look around at this scene and I can get all sorts of uh, interesting effects. And that is basically how I created uh, one of the effects in one of my recent dailies. Uh, you can try different things here. Uh, I think everything was a little bit tighter in the, in the one that I had done uh, previously. Uh, you can put your own textures on here. I just uh, did this in a rush when I did it. So uh, that's it. Thanks for watching.